We've talked about rectangular two-dimensional arrays in C. In those, all the rows have the same length. But sometimes, you want a two-dimensional array where each row can have its own length. Those are called jagged arrays, and this video shows how to build those and use them in C. In the video on rectangular arrays, I use the example of keeping statistics for football teams. Our rectangular array had one row for each game in a season and one column for each quarter. But that kind of broke down when we added the idea of overtimes and buys. With those, not every game has four quarters. To handle that, we're going to need jagged arrays. The way to build a jagged array in C is to build it as an array of arrays. We have one array that has an entry for each row. Each entry is a pointer to an array containing the data for that row. Later, when we learn about dynamic memory allocation, we can make these at runtime. But for now, we can build them with array initializers. We use one initializer for each row, and then one to build the array pointing at the rows. As with one-dimensional arrays, we need some way to know how long each row is. One option for that is to have an array to hold the sizes of each row. Since we have three rows, that array will have three sizes. Just like with rectangular arrays, we can use nested loops to walk through the whole array. Notice that it lets us index the array the same way we did for rectangular arrays. We just have to use the size array to stop the inner loop so that it runs the right number of times for each row. Let's look at how that actually gets stored in the stack frame. I've colored each of the arrays we need. Here are the three rows. Notice they didn't get put together. The compiler has a preference for putting things in multiples of the four word chunks that GDB is giving us. There's a hardware background for why it prefers that. So it's rearranged them a bit to try and pay attention to those boundaries. Here's the array named Jagged that is the array of arrays. It is three two word pointers. And here's our size array. I think it's pretty interesting that the compiler lets us index this array the same way we indexed a rectangular array. Remember, with a rectangular array, it was stored in row major order, and the location of one entry was the base value plus a function of the row and column indices. For jagged arrays, the compiler has to index the array of arrays to get the start of the row, and then add the column number to get that location. So the code the compiler generates for indexing the rectangular and jagged arrays is very different, even though the syntax that we use is the same. As an alternative to keeping the sizes of the rows, we could add one entry to each row that tells us we're at the end. For example, we could say that each row ends with an entry of negative one, assuming that our real data could never be negative one. If we do that, then a loop that is walking down a row is a sentinel controlled loop instead of a count controlled loop. Let's look at an example. Let's redo our football example with a jagged array. This time, I represented it with a jagged array where negative one terminates each row. Yes, this costs one extra entry in each row, but it saves us the array of row sizes. So in the zeroth game, they played four quarters, but look at game four, they must have had four overtimes. This code will compute the total passing yards in each game and then sum them up to get an average passing yards per game. The inner loop is summing up each row. Notice that I've coded it as a wild loop because now it's a sentinel controlled loop. We're going until we see the negative one. The outer loop is the same as it was for rectangular arrays, a count controlled loop walking down the array of rays to get to each row. Bottom line, jagged arrays are two-dimensional arrays where the rows do not all have to be the same size. In C, jagged arrays are stored as an array of row arrays. With a jagged array, we can index a particular position just like we did for rectangular arrays by putting the row and column in square brackets after the array's name. And that's pretty magic 
because rectangular and jagged arrays are stored very differently. As with one-dimensional arrays, there are two ways that we can record the length of each row. Either we can store the row sizes in an array that is indexed by row number and gives us the size of each row, or we can make each row have one extra entry that contains a special value demarking the end of the row.